On the east coast of Australia, 70 miles north of Sydney, a small rocky headland known as Nobby's Point marks the mouth of the Hunter River. Rounding this headland, ships slide into the sheltered waters of Port Hunter and come to a city, Newcastle. Newcastle is the second city of New South Wales and the fourth seaport of Australia. 141,000 people live in our city. It's a city of industry. Coal and steel are its lifeblood, and its harbour is busy with ships. Its horizon is lost in the smoke of steelworks and factories. Our main street is Hunter Street, named after an early governor of New South Wales. It has the easy atmosphere of a country town main street. The pace is leisurely. People stop for a yarn, and you meet folks you haven't seen for a while. Our biggest school is the Technical College, directed by the state government, but generously supported by the great industrial companies. The Iron Workers Union and Miners Federation are the two most powerful unions. 50,000 of us belong to trade unions. Though they may differ on industrial matters, employers and employees come together in civic affairs. The committee planning the new community cultural centre includes a senior union official and a steelworks executive, besides representatives of all other sections of the community. Both the unions and the steel companies are helping to finance the project. Most of the heavy industry of our city stretches along the waterfront. Just across the harbour are the state-owned shipyards and the floating docks, employing together about 2,000 men. The docks can lift vessels up to 15,000 tonnes and handles a million tonnes of shipping a year while the yards have turned out ships up to 10,000 tons. The building of a fleet of modern interstate ships heads its present long-term production program. Many workers in all our industries are skilled tradesmen from Britain. 5,000 of them came from Newcastle on Tyne. The ships of the Broken Hill Proprietary Limited bring raw materials from all parts of the continent to the Newcastle Steelworks, backloading with coal and steel. They bring iron ore from South Australia, dolomite and magnesite from New South Wales, limestone, shelite and wolfram from Tasmania. With vast industrial interests all over the Commonwealth, Broken Hill Proprietary, better known as BHP, is the greatest private employer of labour in our city. Of 20,000 steel workers in Newcastle, 12,000 work for BHP and its associated industries. <laughs> 20,000 Newcastle men make steel, a million tonnes a year. A million tons of pig iron, a million tons of coke, nine million gallons of tar. We make steel comparable to any in the world. We make more than half the steel produced in Australia. Steel for every town and city in the country. Steel for Britain, steel for India, steel for China and Africa, steel for the world. the hungry furnaces, we bring coal from the northern fields at Cessnock and Curry, and from the fields of Newcastle. The northern field is the richest known coal belt in the Commonwealth. 122 mines produce 30,000 tonnes daily. 48 mines are within the greater city area. <laughs> 
12,000 men work in the mine. They work an eight-hour day, five days a week. Wage men working on the coal face earn about seven pounds ten a week. Contract workers can make up to about 11 pounds. Wheelers can average between seven and eight pounds a week. Surface men get 20 shillings a day. For the miners, the field has many good features. The mines are mainly non-gaseous and dust-free, and the seams, ranging up to 30 feet, are never less than two feet in width. In the best mines, working conditions are as good as any in the world. While the nationwide Federation of Miners concentrates on matters of general policy, local lodges deal with domestic problems and relations with individual management. Small disputes arising out of local conditions are dealt with at pit-top meetings, and in most cases, settled on the spot. Nevertheless, Australian miners, like miners the world over, keep up a continual struggle for improved conditions. Because of their importance in the national economy, miners possess a unique bargaining power, and they do not hesitate to use it. The most important objective is the straight-out nationalization of the coal mining industry. As well as supporting the steelworks, 396,486 wagons of coal go out through the port of Newcastle each year. They go by train to the docks to be loaded on ships, which will take the coal to other states. to run the railways of South Australia a thousand miles away. Coal to feed the factories of Victoria. Coal to give light and power to New South Wales. Newcastle. Coal for powerhouses, ships, workshops, hospitals, homes. Coal for the nation. the story behind our city, coal and steel and ships, the power of great machines and the labor of men. That is the pattern of our working days for us people of Newcastle. One side of our lives, the shipyards, the steelworks, the mines, the busy waterfront, the shops and offices and streets of our city, friendship and cooperation, conflict and dispute, agreement and disagreement. But there's another side. We can enjoy our leisure hours at the great national sport of horse racing. With a stake on the horse of our choice, we can join the crowd and experience the thrill of a close finish as the horses head for the winning post. But 
for most of us, the hours of leisure fit more comfortably into the background of our environment, the quiet spaciousness of the Australian landscape. We find our contentment in the warmth of the sun and the simplicity of fundamental things. Our favourite spot is Lake Macquarie, not far from the city. In the villages and weekend settlements along the 200 miles of its shoreline, thousands of people from Newcastle spend their weekends and holidays. Some families move in bag and baggage for the whole six months of the summer season, the working members coming back to camp each evening. Here we enjoy the open air life, the sun, and the pleasures of yachting and swimming in the quiet waters of the lake. But the everyday playground of our people is the seafront, the beaches and swimming pools at our back door. Stretching from Nobby's Point to Merriweather, the Pacific rollers break along the four-mile seaward boundary of our city. Australian beaches offer a variety of sports, Swimming, surfboard riding, the thrill of speeding surf boats. We work in the foundries and the mines, in the shops and offices. And we play on the beach, in the surf, the rock pools, sharing them equally and freely. Our children grow up together in the sun. Newcastle's most modern suburb is on the hill overlooking Bar Beach. But most of us live in the average type of Australian house, which costs us about one day's pay a week. These suburbs are compact, but every house has a garden back and front. Few streets are more than 20 minutes tram ride from the city. In the industrial areas, the State Housing Commission is building new homes for the lower paid workers. These new projects will gradually replace the older residential areas along the waterfront. We are the people of Newcastle. We who live in the little streets along the waterfront, in the suburbs, in the new houses on the hill. Laborers, staff men, tradesmen, managers. Together we have built this city and the great industries that are our pride and common livelihood. We shall go on building for our children. That is the story of our city.